Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. It is Ficus Friday today, and today I'm going to be working on my new Morton Bay Ficus. I've always wanted a Morton Bay fig. This tree is a gift from Florence of the Toronto Bonsai Society. So let's get it unwrapped and have a look at the tree. All right, here is a look at the tree. Since I got it, it's been growing really well with a lot of vigor. The Morton Bay fig is native to Australia, and I always wondered, well, where is Morton Bay? So let's have a look. Here I am in Ontario, Canada. So we have to go all the way around the globe to Australia. Right here. Morton Bay is located near Brisbane here, about halfway up the continent on the East Coast. When I get a new species of plant, I like to look up the climate of where the plant is from. So I checked out the climate of Morton Bay. So here is the temperature range throughout the year. And here is a look at the amount of rainfall they get. The Morton Bay fig has a fairly small natural range along the east coast of Australia, but it's been naturalized in other countries, Hawaii, Florida in the United States, Taiwan, any tropical place in the world. The Morton Bay fig is famous for a large buttressed root system with like those thin ribbon type roots on them. They were featured in the original movie Jurassic Park. Uh, there was trees in Hawaii that had the dinosaur eggs hatching amongst the roots. So I'm really excited to get this species. Uh, the leaves on the Morton Bay aren't really small. They're kind of uh, closer to a ficus elastica or rubber tree in size. But they can be reduced with ramification, restricting the root system and leaf pruning to keep the size to a reasonable level. I would say you would want to grow these trees to a medium size or even a large size as a bonsai. I was given this Morton Bay ficus from Florence at the December meeting of the Toronto Bonsai Society. So I haven't had it that long. And I thought about, well, when's the best time to start working on the tree? Because I was really excited to get working on it. And since I put it in the plant room, it's been growing really, really well. I can see active root growth. So I think the tree really likes the plant room. It's warm, humid, and I've got good light from the grow lights. So I just can't wait. I'm going to get it repotted today, get that root system underway to try and get those nice buttressed and hopefully ribbon-like roots. I'll show you some images of full-size Morton Bay figs that are growing in parks or in nature, and you'll see how fantastic a tree they are. This tree is growing in a pond basket. It has all these holes in the side. And you can see how well the roots have grown. They're growing out the bottom of the pot. Roots grow out the side of the pot. They're growing everywhere. They're growing on the surface of the soil. So I think it has a really large root system. The reason I want to get working on this tree fairly early in its life is I want to get those radial roots underway to eventually try and create those ribbon roots, that would be really, really nice. 
So I, I, uh, I thought about waiting until summer, but I, I just can't wait. I want to get that root system going in the right direction. So I'm going to be repotting the tree today. I'm really excited about developing a nice radial root system on this tree. So I'm almost afraid of what I'm going to be doing to this tree today. I definitely don't want to kill the tree, so I'll leave enough roots on that the tree will thrive for the rest of the winter. So my first step today, I'm going to prune off all the roots that are sticking out of the basket so I can get the tree out of the pot. All right, here I go pruning off the roots that are sticking out of the basket. If I left these roots on, I would never be able to remove it from the basket. Some of these roots grow out of the holes and back in the holes. Almost like it's tying the tree to the basket. And then I'll have to remove all the roots on the other sides and the ones that are growing underneath. Wow, look at all these roots. So Florence had this tree growing under a grow light. So you can see it's been doing really well. It's nice and healthy. Which is always a good start to a tree, getting a healthy tree. If you start with a sickly tree, the first step is just to restore the health of it. And sometimes that means repotting, sometimes it means grow lights. Sometimes it just takes time to get them healthy once again. So I see some wire on the bottom, so I think the tree is wired into the pot. So we'll have to snip that away. I've got my wire cutter, so I'll just snip that wire underneath. And keep pruning away roots. Now, I don't know what pot I will put the tree in. I think a lot will depend on what the root system looks like after I finished root pruning. I may put it in a shallow pot. I could put it back in this pot if I want maximum root growth. I'm hoping there's not too many of those big bulbous roots in here, but you never know. It, it, uh, on a ficus, you never know what kind of root system you have. It could be fat and bulbous and quite ugly, or it could be you know, quite refined and good looking. Ficus roots take a lot of work to keep them under control. I would uh, you know, recommend repotting your ficus at least every two years if possible. Three years at the most, Anything beyond that, you're going to get big, fat, bulbous roots in the soil. And it just gets harder and harder to manage from then on. You have to do some big cuts. So it's best to keep it, the root system under control if you can. Okay, I think, I think I'm ready to get the tree out of the pot. I've got all the major roots snipped away. It may be... A little tough getting it out of all these uh, holes in the bottom. It might be sort of locked in, but we will see. I don't know if I can get this wire out first. Maybe not. Okay, well, let's see if I can get the tree out of the pot. All right, so I have a lot of aerial roots growing up here. I'll try not to break them off. I might, might be keeping some of them. I'm just kind of loosening the tree up in the pot. Okay, I think it's ready to come out now. There it is. Wow. Good looking soil here. Nice and crumbly. There's a mat of roots on the bottom, but it's too bad. It's definitely been repotted fairly recently. 
because it's not too root bound. There's a lot of roots on the top here that are winding around the edge of the pot. So they'll need sorting out. All right, I think I can begin raking out the roots. I've kind of got all these wrapping roots sorted out now. I think. <laughs> I'm not sure where that one comes from. I think it goes in there, yeah. All right, I'll get out the root rake and begin combing out the roots. This looks like really, really good soil here. Looks like maybe Akadama and pine bark. I always find it interesting that as you're digging through the soil here, that you know, all these big thick roots are growing out in the air around the surface of the pond. There's my wire I can take out. And, you know, you would think the roots would be growing in the soil where they're happy, but no, they sometimes prefer to grow up into the air. And those are the ones that have thickened up. Which just shows that, you know, roots need a lot of oxygen to stay healthy and to stimulate growth. So I'll be bare rooting this root system so I can clearly see the root structure and make good pruning decisions on the roots. I don't want to just blindly go in and start cutting away without knowing what's there first. So I think this tree wasn't bare rooted the last time it was repotted because the soil in the interior of the root system here is definitely finer and more organic. Yeah, you can see the soil on the inside here was holding a lot of moisture. It's nice to have an even soil mix in your bonsai so the watering is consistent. So you know, if you have two types of soil, like organic in the middle here and the bonsai soil surrounding it, uh, this soil stays too wet and the bonsai soil will dry out. So it's hard to water for both types of soil. You need really just one type of soil. There's that wire out. One type of consistent soil in your tree or in your root system and then you can water according to that type of soil. So it looks like you can see the trunk comes up here and most of the roots are down at this level. And so far I'm happy with what I see. I think it's a you know, good looking root system, that's for sure. Okay, I'm going to take away the old soil and then continue combing out the roots, trying to get it bare rooted. All right, let me continue with the root raking, removing all the old soil, and getting the tree bare rooted. I find the root system is just as exciting to work on as the upper branch system on a tree. I like developing both really nicely. And this is a good age of a tree to begin with to, you know, develop it into a really nice bonsai. If you get too old a tree, you know, all the surface roots are kind of set and you have to do either some major, major pruning to sort the root system out. So I like when trees are about this age, there's enough roots on there to work with and it's not too old that it's, you know, it takes major, major correction to get your root system nice and radial and flowing. Just a little more combing from above and I think the tree is bare rooted. Okay. I'll clean up my tray and we'll come back for the root pruning. Before I continue with the root pruning, I'm going to mist the roots with rainwater and I'm going to get my soil bin, which is in the poly house, which is really cold, and bring it into the greenhouse here and get it warmed up before I repot the tree. My mister is inside, so I'll have to use the watering can to wet down the roots. 
make sure they stay nice and hydrated. I've got my soil bin in the greenhouse here warming up. And of course, my soil bin is always empty. So I'm going to have to mix up some new soil for the ficus. I've mixed up a fresh batch of soil. It's 50% perlite by volume and 50% safety zorb, which is a fired clay particle. So I'll mix it together now. Looks like a nice, loose, crumbly mix. Perfect for growing roots. So I'll add some fir bark in here. I add about, yeah, I don't know, 10, 20 percent. Not too much. Just a little bit of organic matter as a, you know, a backup. It holds a little more moisture. Maybe promotes, you know, beneficial bacteria in the soil. I don't know. All right, so that is all ready for planting my ficus. It's time now to begin the root pruning. My first step will be to find the front of the tree, and that'll be based on the trunk and the roots and the branch structure, whatever looks the best. I'm having a look at the tree. So from this view, you can see the trunk kind of slants and then goes upright, dividing into a double trunk. If I rotate it to this view, you know, it's fairly upright. It kind of goes back just a bit and then forward. This view is the same as the other side, the curved trunk dividing into two. And this side, well, it's a mess of roots. It's hard to see what's going on for all these aerial roots. So these aerial roots, these aren't the roots you want. They're getting thick. They come off the trunk at, well, almost 90 degrees. They don't flow down into the soil. So my first step, I'm going to remove all these roots and then I'll get a better look at picking the front of the tree. So my root base is down here, not up here, and these roots, they would never make nice looking aerial roots. Your aerial roots, you want them to either come drop down from branches or you want them snaking along the trunk, tight to the trunk, so as they thicken up they fuse with the trunk and make a, a really interesting trunk line. So th these roots have to be removed. They're just sticking out in midair and they're getting thick and just, it'll never be part of the design of the tree. So here I go removing those roots. I'll come in with my cutters and I want to prune them fairly tight to the trunk. So here goes this big root up top here. Removing that. So there's a look at that root, a big one. Next, I'm going to, these ones have dried up. Uh, they may reactivate, but I'm going to prune them off. Again, they kind of stick out into midair. They're not really good flowing roots. So all these little ones will come off. There's a little one here that can come off. One here that's broken and it's dried up. There's a fairly thick one here that's going to come off. Like that. And then around this side I have some real beauties. So this one's got to come off. Like that. That was quite a root. And then this one's too high, it's got to come off. So, off 
it comes. Like that. Now, let's have a look. So I've got a couple up here I can remove. And all these aerial roots will grow back in. Um, because it's in the plant room, it's moist and humid. I'm sure I'll get a lot of aerial roots forming on this tree. I've got a few up here between the two trunk lines that I'll prune away with my scissors, like that. There's one up high here I'll take away. I've got a couple of roots here I can remove. One here, this is dried up also. Okay, I'm starting to get closer to the main root system. I've got two here, one directly above the other, that one of them has to come off and it'll be the higher one. So that one's gone. There's a root here. It's kind of sticking up out of the soil, but I may use it. So I better keep that one on because I don't, you can see there's various levels of the root system. There's a thick root back here that it could be part of the radial root system. I've got all these roots here. <sighs> so I guess what I need to do is determine the root plane. There's a couple of roots sticking straight up here I can take off. And one here sticking straight up. I want these roots to flow into the soil. Coming down, the trunk line comes down and then the roots should flow into the soil. Let's look at this thick one here. So I have to pick, is my root plane going to be here or up here or somewhere between? So I'm looking at the tree. This is a pretty good looking front to the tree here. The trunk comes up, my thicker branches in the front, my thinner one behind. You see the curve of the trunk, you see some nice roots off to the left here. So I, I think these two roots are too high, so I'm going to remove those ones. That one and this one. They're gone. There. I think this one's still too high. That one can come off. So I, I think my root plane has to be somewhere around here. So I don't think I need this upper one. I have a better root below, quite a thick one, so I'll move that one. I've got some root growing straight up here. I'm going to remove that one. This one I think can be bent down into the soil. There's one sticking straight up there. There's an aerial root on the inside I'm going to take off there. And then this one is a little high, but it's kind of the same level as this thick one here. So I better keep it. I will prune it off shorter to here for now and maybe shorter later on. This one could be pruned off here, this one here. This is just rough pruning. Getting rid of my longest roots. And this one can be pruned off here. Okay, let's have a look at the root system now. So next, 
I think, you know, I've got my root plane established, and I, I think this will be the front of the tree. It's quite a nice front. Everything is looking good. Branch structure, trunk line, root base. So I need to do a little more combing here just to sort the roots out and get them going in a nice radial direction. There's still some soil in here that I need to clean out. Okay, so next, I want to go above and just see if I can do any root correcting with the roots that are left. So I'm just examining every root, and I'm looking for radial direction, that the roots come off the trunk in a radial direction, that they're not like this one. Here's the radial direction, and it's kind of twisted over. So I have a root tip here that I can redirect that root into a more of a radial direction by pruning the tip off. So now you can see it's a little more radial. I can prune this tip off, this tip off here. There's one here that's going a little sideways. I'll prune the tip off it. Prune that one back a bit. That root's good. Now this one like here's my radial main root, this big thick one, and this one's kind of coming off at quite an angle. And I have another root here that I think kind of goes underneath this root. So I need to prune this one off here. So I get new roots growing in a nice radial direction. So I'll get rid of that part of that root. And this one, you can see it starts off thin. It's getting thicker. It's a bit of a potato root. So I have some good surface roots up here. So I'm going to prune off the bottom of that root like that. Developing these as my surface roots. This root's fine. I've got a couple of roots coming from way in here that kind of come out. This root isn't very radial. I'm going to have to prune that back. I can't have a root growing from here coming off at a funny angle and growing across my root base. So usually with a root like this the best thing to do is prune it right off and then from the cut point you'll get new roots that'll come out in a more radial direction. So I'm going to remove that root entirely. It has no future with this bonsai. Now, have I got it? Oh, I need to go a little deeper with my cut there. So that root's gone. And I'll just comb out that section. Let's see what's going on here bit of soil in there. Yeah. Now, I've got a root here going the wrong direction. I'll prune that one away. This one could be pruned back where it starts curling around. This one could be pruned back. Always trying to get a radial direction for your roots. So you can see this one, it comes off at a funny angle, so I'm going to redirect it. There's a root growing more radially here, so I'll take it off there. These ones, you can see they're kind of long without any subdividing. They're kind of long, straight, and boring without any taper. So just like the branches of your tree, you want to prune your root system back to develop ramification taper and movement to your roots. Now I think this one too is getting off radial so I'm going to take the tip off it like that developing it more out here. Ooh. 
just looking at the roots on the bottom, I can prune some of these bottom roots back. Keeping them on, just keeping them short. Find kind of fibrous feeder roots on the bottom, like that. A little bit of soil in here I can remove. So all the soil will get replaced with fresh soil. Which is nice and light and airy and should promote good root growth. Okay, so I think that's it for the root system for today. Well, this one could come off. It's not radio. Yeah, I, I think that's as much as I want to do for the initial root pruning and repotting. It's got a good healthy root system on it still so it shouldn't suffer the tree at all over the winter. Okay, now I've got to decide what pot to put it in. These mesh baskets are really good for developing roots. They're nice and airy. The roots grow out the side of the basket and they tend to air prune. They dry out when they stick out of the holes in the pot and it develops a, a more fibrous root system inside the soil. Uh, so. I think this is a good size for the tree. I think, you know, it's an excellent training pot. So I'll just put the tree right back in the same pink pot. Here's what the tree looks like in the pot. So there's lots of room for root growth. It's a good size pot for it. Here's what I took off the root system. So lots of tangled roots. Most of these are aerial roots. So I'll get a base layer of soil in the pot. I want to plant the tree in the soil, but not too, too deep. So that's my next step. I'll clean the pot up and get a base layer of soil and then position the tree. My soil is warmed up now. So I'll begin filling the pink pot with bonsai soil. There's no drainage screens required with this one. You always get a little bit of the fine particles coming out the sides, but once it's full, it stabilizes. You don't have any more leak out. So I'm just checking the level of the soil. I want to make sure the tree is in the soil. I could go a little higher with my soil. So now I've got to position the tree in the pot. So the front of the tree was about here and I'll want this trunk fairly upright there's a broken off root there and I'll put the tree fairly central in the pot it is in development I want to grow roots kind of equally on all sides I'll move it over this way just slightly so the base of the tree is pretty well in the middle of the pot. So my angles are all looking good here. I'll comb out my root system just to make sure everything's as radial as possible. Here is a look at the root system in the pot. So I'll begin filling it in with soil now. All right, so there's my angle. So here I go, filling it in with soil. Bearing my hand and everything, apparently. Now I'm going to work that soil into the root system, just making sure there's no air pockets in here. And I'm going to lift the tree just slightly so the roots, instead of being horizontal, are going down into the soil just a little bit. Okay, I can add some more soil now. I don't want to add too much soil. I want, you know, this is 
sort of where my root plane starts so I don't want to grow roots off of the trunk into the soil by burying it too deeply so I think this level is quite good here and I'll just level it out tree feels good and firm in the pot so I should get new roots growing in you know within a week it should start to grow regain its vigor and all will be well so that is repotted next I've got to give the tree a watering all right here I go with the water give it a good thorough soaking That new soil is quite dry, so it absorbs a lot of water. So, new soil like this, you should water it quite frequently the first day. Like I'll, uh, once I get this in the plant room, about an hour later I'll water it thoroughly again. And then maybe two hours later I'll water it thoroughly again. Because these particles all have to absorb water before they're kind of saturated. So you can see I've run a whole watering can through here and it's just barely coming out the bottom of the pot. The soil is soaking up all that water. The shortest day of the year has come and gone yesterday so from now on the days will be getting longer and longer which is always exciting. Let's fly in now and have a look at my Morton Bay ficus. my Morton Bay fig into the plant room now getting it warmed up once again and hopefully by the end of winter it'll put on a ton of new growth and it'll be ready for another pruning in spring before it goes outside probably here in the greenhouse. That is all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone. <music>